quite often nowadays we hear many of our people say if only the rabbis could make Jewish observance easier more would practice it if only the rabbis could be a bit more lenient with the law more would keep it yet Pesach and Yom Kippur the two festivals which require more hard work and effort than any others are the most widely observed. The exertions of a 24-hour fast within all this service attract even the remotest Jews to fill our synagogues to overflowing. Pesach, which demands the most exacting preparations, cost and sacrifice, sanctifies every Jewish home. By contrast, Shavuot, which is the shortest and easiest, and yet one of the most beautiful and profound of all festivals is neglected in synagogue and home. The truth of the matter is that a religion that demands nothing is worth nothing. And where the challenge is small, the response is smaller still. Or as our rabbis put it in the ethics of the fathers, le funzara agra, according to the hardship, is the reward. Congregations, homes and schools which make maximum demands experience minimum hostility. If we are to ponder on the mitzvah of eating the matzah and maror, we would see that our tradition makes it clear that the matzah which symbolizes freedom must be eaten with the maror which symbolizes hardship and affliction. In other words, good result is achieved only through hard work. The Talmud tells us that he who toils on Friday shall enjoy his food on the Shabbat. Families who insist on the most bacterious observance face no problems of generation gaps or fallout. In other words, the road towards a vigorous Jewish life has no shortcuts to convenience or ease. The famous American Mark Twain used to say that when he was 14, his father was so ignorant that he could hardly stand to have him around. Then when he got to be 21, he was astonished to find out how much his father had learned in those seven years. Mark Twain was fortunate in bridging the generation gap. Sadly, many children today cannot relate to parents nor the parents to their children. They do not really communicate. Pesach is therefore the festival of communication between father and son. When the son asks Marku King Behamishpati, what are all these testimonies which the Lord has commanded us, the father must reply and explain to him. The son must feel free to ask and be confident that the father has the knowledge to answer. Today values change considerably and the generation gap widens from day to day. Our youth must be taught the traditions. The seder must be demonstrated to our youth. If they are critical of present day Jewish life, do not criticize them, for Judaism insists on mental alertness. Continual questioning and constant searching for the truth upon which Judaism is founded. This is why the Torah instructs us not to ignore the questions of our sons and daughters. Basic problems between parents and children are not ones of basic philosophy, but an apparent inability or unwillingness to communicate. Pesach is known as Chag Ha'imuna, the festival of faith, and our faith must be imparted to our children during the Seder night. The Torah tells us that after the plague of the locusts, Pharaoh called Moses and told him, You may go and worship God, but mi va mi Who exactly is to go? All, said Moses, vinarinu viskenu nelech, young and old, boys and girls. Pharaoh could not grasp the purpose of sending small children to serve God, flared up and told Moses to leave his sight. 
Moses had taught us a great lesson, namely that Judaism can survive only when the young and the old walk together. Throughout our history, people like Pharaoh wanted to separate the generations. Thus, the adults would be unable to convey our, tradi our sacred traditions to the young. This is why on the Seder night we are asked to sit around the table, young and old, boys and girls, so that the gap will be bridged between father and son, mother and daughter. On the Seder table we put Eliyahu's cup. Why? What has Eliyahu to do with Pesach? The reason is that we pray to the Almighty God to see the fulfillment of the prophecy of Malach. Namely, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. In other words, Eliyahu will bridge the gap so that unity and shalom will reign in our midst. Amen.